Welcome to section 6.4. We're now assessing normality. Basically, we can assume that certain things are normal, blood pressure, cholesterol levels, height, IQ scores. Sometimes we're told that data comes to us as normally distributed, but very often we have to assess whether that data is normal or not. So to do this, the first thing, if we can, is to figure out what the source of variation in the population is. And if there are a lot of different factors, some of which add and some of which subtract, then the distribution is probably normal. Now, if in your head you're imagining a Galton board and you're imagining balls falling and hitting pegs as likely to be adding, that is going to the right, as subtracting, that is going to the left, and there's lots of pegs and lots of balls, then you're thinking exactly what I'm thinking. That variation comes from many different factors, each adding and subtracting. Now, when we look at the histogram, it should be roughly bell-shaped. Now, there shouldn't be more than one outlier. So to find outliers, a nice way to do this, and this is what our calculator uses, it calculates the interquartile range, multiplies that by 150%, by 1.5, and if a value is outside that range of 150% of the interquartile range, then it is considered to be an outlier. There should be no more than one outlier. So you're allowed one, but no more. The normal probability plot is a sophisticated way of determining whether the data falls in a normal distribution. Our data will come to us as a random collection. That in itself is makes it hard to determine whether it's normal. A normal probability plot is a very sophisticated analysis that our calculator can do. If the points in the normal probability plot lie close to a line, then the data is approximately normal. So how do we do these things? So a histogram, we enter the data, we make sure that we've turned off any previous plat plots. We set up the plot choosing the histogram, identify the list containing the data, um, and then I always go into zoom and then press nine for stat zoom. And I think that's pretty common practice. Um, box plots help us identify outliers, so we turn off any previous plots, we create a box plot, and something different from our text, we use the fourth type, not the fifth, because it uses 150% of the interquartile rule to show us outliers. And then again, zoom 9 for stats zoom. The normal probability plot is what looks like a line, but when you're in the stats menu, you're clearly not graphing lines. So that normal probability plot is the, the last choice. And we're going to choose the data axis to be Y so that it looks like our book. And then again, if it's close to a straight line, then that suggests that it's normal. So our first example from the book comes from a blowhole. It asks, is the time in seconds between eruptions normally distributed? So here is a table full of all of that data. And the first thing that we have to do is load that data into our calculator. So if we do want to do that, we go into the stat menu. Then we leave it on edit and we press enter. So here's list one. So starting with 83, the first time in seconds between eruptions, and then 51 as you work across, then an 87, you can put this data in any order, it's not paired, then 60, then 28, then 95, then eight, then 27, and then moving to the next row, 15, 10, 18, 16, 29, you get the idea. So this is that data entered into L1. So notice I've got data in L2 as well, that's for our next example, but here is all the data ending in that 14912. So now we're going to use that data to make a histogram. So to do that, I need to go into stat plots. So above the Y equals key, right below your screen, it says stat plots in blue. So to get blue results, you press second first and then stat plots. So it looks like the first plot is on. I'm going to enter to go into it. That's fine. 
and I want this plot to be a histogram. So I'm going to go down to the type, and then I'm going to go over to that histogram. I'm going to select it. And then I'm going to go down to the lists. Right now it says L2. That's where I've got other data. I want to change that to L1. Notice that in blue above the 1 key is L1. Blue means I press 2nd and then 1 to get L1. I press Enter. And let's see what we've got. We've got plot 1 turned on. It's a histogram. It's taking data from L1. That looks good to me. So I press Enter. Now I could press Graph. But the screen size and the screen dimensions and, and where it's centered on could be completely wrong. So I go to Zoom next. Now some of you may be able to click on Zoom directly and then go down to 9. But some calculators, and this includes 84s, don't like that. So you can always quit first. So second mode takes you to the home screen. Then press Zoom. If you can directly press Zoom, that works too. I'm going to go down to 9 to show you what 9 selects. It selects Zoom Stat. It'll be the same thing as pressing 9 on the keypad. I'm going to press Enter, and I've got a histogram. And I notice right away, quick, that this looks nothing like a bell shape. So this first piece of evidence would kind of imply that this is not looking normal. But we're now going to do a box plot. So I'm going to press second and y equals to go back into the stat plots. I'm going to press enter to go into that first plot. And I'm going to go down to select the type. I then have to go down to that fourth choice. I say down, but I'm going over to get to it, the right arrow key. That fourth choice, notice, has two little dots. Those little dots are outliers, and that's what I'm looking for. I want to see how many outliers they are. So I press Enter to select that. The list is still L1, and the mark doesn't bother me. So I'm going to second quit to get back to the home screen. I'm going to press Zoom. I could go down to 9 every time, but that's the same thing as pressing 9 on the keypad. And what do I see? I see 2 outliers. We're allowed to have one. So that box plot is already telling me that there are too many outliers. There's two outliers. Now for the most sophisticated thing of all, and that is the normal probability plot. So we're going to go into stat plots again. So second y equals to get into stat plots. Press enter to get into it. Leave it on. And let's go down to type and then over to what looks like that jagged line. Press enter. And we want the data axis to be the y axis. So that looks like it's selected. I'll press enter just to make sure. Um, I'm going to check it's on. It's a normal probability plot. We're using the y-axis, and we're taking our data still from L1. We're looking at those blowhole eruptions. Second to quit, press Zoom. And this time, I'm not going to scroll down. I'm just going to press 9 on the keyboard. And notice it, it, it's taken quite a bit of work to do this. What I'm looking at is not the two dots in the upper right. Instead, I'm looking at the trend. This is in no way a line. It definitely looks like it's asymptotic on the left side. Looks like it increases for a little bit and then continues in that diagonal pattern. So maybe close to being flat to close to 45 degrees, not a line. So when we look at that normal probability plot, we'd have to conclude that it is not linear. So our conclusion for this blowhole data is that it is almost certainly not normally distributed. Okay, our next example is IQ scores. Now, just because these are IQ scores doesn't mean that they must be normally distributed because remember, they're a sample. So, I mean, this is not all the IQ scores that were created at a given time. So we have to do the same thing we did before, and that is put the data into our calculator. I'm going to second um, quit to get back to the home screen. I'm then going to press stats to get into the edit menu. Press enter. And I put the second set of data in L2. So again, going across first, I see 78. 
92, 96, 100, 67, 105, 109, 75, 127, 111, and then 93 on the next row. All the way down to, somewhere down here, it ends with, looks like an 89, and there, oh, okay. So an 89, and then 102 before, 107 before that. So L2 are my IQ scores. So I'm going to second quit out of that, go into the stat plot. I'm going to enter to get into it. The first thing I want is a histogram. So I'm going to go down and then over to histograms. I'm going to change the list to L2. So second two changes that to L2, enter. And I'm going to quit again to get to the home screen, zoom, and then a nine to zoom stat. Now that is not a perfect histogram but, or that is not a, a perfect symmetric curve. There's that little dip in the middle. It looks like it's kind of right tailed, but it is very close to being symmetric. So certainly more symmetric than what we saw before. Let's go back into the stat menu. Let's select that first plot, go down and change this to a box plot with outliers. That's our fourth choice. Still using the data from L2. I'm gonna quit, I'm gonna zoom, I'm going to zoom stat and no outliers, not even one. So that's looking good as well. Now let's make the normal probability plot. So we're going to go back into stat plots, select, leave it on, go down to the type and over to a normal probability plot. Um, L2, that's good. Y, everything looks good to me. Let's quit, go into zoom and do a, my goodness, that is very close to being linear. So the normal pl probability plot looks very much like a line. So the conclusion for this data is it can be assumed to be normally distributed. And that finishes 6-4.